I'm Ben Negron from Team Tiger TV, and I'm here with Eric Michael Schrader, a two-time Emmy Award winner from his work on Life Below Zero. Nice to be with you, Eric. Nice to see you. Hi, Ben. I saw a bunch of your video stuff, and I was inspired by the work that you were doing over there at WPAA. I really enjoyed what I saw. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. You have a future. You have a future, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, if I could be half as good as you were, then I definitely got a future. Uh, the way you learn is being at a place like WPAA. Yeah. Um, well, since we're already talking about it, can I ask you a little bit about your experience here at WPAA? Okay, I'm 42, so let's see if the memory... i got to download. Hold on. i got to download from the cloud. Hold on. Okay, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, my memory is at WPAA? No. When did you when did you start here? How old were you? Even, you could ask. I don't even know what year that was. Maybe two thousand. Okay. Five, six, something like that. All right. I know that I left for Los Angeles two thousand twelve, and WPA was one of the last jobs I had. And I felt like I was there. I mean, I'm bad with numbers, terrible with math. I was definitely there for at least six years. It might have been more. I don't. I don't remember. I was. Not at that studio that you're at now. There was another studio across the street. Yep. Then I came to this studio when it was being built. Uh, Kurt and everyone built that place. But uh, I remember the transition from A to B. Okay. Which one? Uh, so what did you start doing? Like when you started? Were you making your own films? I heard you did documentaries. I was living in Wallingford. Okay. And then someone told me about the TV station, and then I just, like, I mean, I think I literally got the job as I came to visit. They were looking for someone, and I was working under, I was working with Jason Burkhart. He was on his way out, so he was, like, trying to, he was showing me, <clears throat> you know, what the studio was, what we do, and I got the job. It was, it was very, uh, it was a nice transition moving to Wallingford, so it was very quick. Okay. Where did you move to Wallingford from? Hamden, Connecticut. That's where I'm originally from. Hamden, Connecticut. Okay. Was there public access there? Uh, no. I gotta put a tree right here. Oh, that's thank awesome. you. Public that's access. Awesome. Trees. I love that you're doing that right now. That makes me... Yeah. I'm actually... That's me. Who is that? What's that guy's name? What's that guy's name? Uh, Tim. Yeah, hey, I'm Tim. Hey, Tim. Party. Let's party. That's me. Party. I love that stuff. You know, when we used to do shows there before... You know how we just did the countdown to come into the show? Yeah. It would be like five, four, three, two, and I would always try to crack a joke to Just make them laugh. <laughs> so, awesome. like Tom Daisy and McCarver, these are people I worked with, I would try to make them crack up before we went live. It was, it was a lot of fun. That's awesome. Oh, man. So, I really want to get into like your early experiences before you kind of bust it through the industry. Yeah, um, I think I was always into video. I'm very lucky to have, I was born in 1981 and I grew up during the decade of probably the best movies of Spielberg and Schwarzenegger and oh, yeah. seeing a lot of stuff growing up and being so influenced by Indiana Jones, The Goonies, uh, Star no, Wars. Wait, wait just stuff. a minute. I heard you did parodies of those in your early days. Oh, and yes, I want to know did. where I can find those. Uh, I'll send, send me an email. Or, Send me your phone number. I'll send them to you. I, yeah, I did like Indiana Jones parodies at like Sleeping Giant. Because, <laughs> you know, Sleeping Giant has a castle. Yeah. And to this day, I, I, I work on movies the same way. Like, what do we have? Like, where's the set? Like, what can we get? Then write the script. So it was like, I knew Sleeping Giant had a castle. Great place to have an Indiana Jones parody. <laughs> Did you get, like, the outfits and the hat and the whip and everything? Oh, yeah. The last yeah. We, were, we were, like, jumping off rocks in Sleeping Giant, like, ponds. With, like, there's, like, rattles. I mean, not rattlesnakes. They had them here. Like, snapping turtles and stuff. We didn't care. We were, like, what, 17 years old? We didn't care. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. I was very lucky. Uh, she had recently just passed away. She's my babysitter in Hamden, and she just, unfortunately, uh, passed away of cancer, my friend Ellen. And Ellen when she would babysit my brothers and I, um, I knew that she had a video camera. So I would bug her to get permission from her father to bring it over. And then once she said, okay, Eric, Dad says I can bring it over when I babysit, I immediately ran, went to the typewriter. We actually had a typewriter, right? Okay. And I would type scripts out of 
weird movies that we were going to make during the time that my parents were on a date and we were going to, and we had a babysitter come over. So my very first movie was a movie called Robo Chop. Not to be confused with Robo Cop, but Robo Chop. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was like very Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, okay. Robot Sci Fi. <laughs> But I was always doing it. Actually, I just found a piece of footage from back then. Um, before she passed away, Ellen, I got the video camera that my home movies were filmed on. I bought it from her for $50, just so I could have that in my collection of stuff. And I thought that was so important to yeah. have the camera when I was a little kid in my collection. Because I'm, I'm like a collector. I have stuff everywhere. Like, and it's like a straight like a a Just cool, old, vintage stuff. That's awesome. That's got to be a nice keepsake for you. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I, you know, I love stuff, and I, I love video. So it's like always keeping tapes. The, I still have all my old VHS tapes. There's a drawer already uh, bent at the desk I'm talking to that. There's like 398 okay. mini DC tapes down here. Like, I'll just keep throwing them out during this whole interview. And, and, and <laughs> so it's like, dude, I have all of the footage of my life, or... The movies that we made. That's awesome. Well, I was always wanting to do this. I was never gonna. I was never gonna go work. My dad worked at the post office. My dad was actually the postmaster in Hollingsburg. Really? Uh, yes, he was. Michael Schrader. My dad was the postmaster. But I was never gonna do that. I always wanted to do video, television, and WPAA. I think when I was in my early twenties. I'm 42 now. I think I started there when I was like 23. Okay. It was a great place where I could, well, at least I was being paid to make videos. Yeah. With the community. Actually, uh, I actually found your friend here. I heard you did some horror films here. Oh, who's my friend? There's a little hand right here. Oh, uh, yeah, we did. And it was cool, too, because we used to hang out with uh, Wayne and the tra uh, uh, the uh, Trail of Terror. I don't know if they still do that, but... Uh, yeah. Wayne it was, was great. Like, I, 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 would just, I would just talk to Wayne and I was like, hey, a bunch of us at WPAA would like to come down and use your set for our movie. And he was like, sure. No money involved, no budget, no problem. We just, we did it. It was great. That's awesome. And that's how I've all, and I'm very punk rocker since I was a little kid. It's all about DIY. You know what DIY has been? Do it yourself. That's right. Of course. Even though I live in Hollywood and there's a budget, I still believe in those morals of do it yourself. What is uh what's that like to go from Connecticut to Hollywood, man? Like is it a difference in your colleagues in the industry? That was one question. I, I, I would surround myself with great people, so all of my friends here remind me of my friends home. Okay. They have everyone's different, but they have I surrounded myself with people that reminded me of what I love most most about Connecticut. So I definitely have tons of friends out here that just remind me. And then also it's not like, yeah, we have the business stuff, I do the Nat Geo thing, but it's also nice to have a foundation of people around you, just like being in Wallingford or Hamden. Yeah. I, I, it's just like, I think that's the one thing, Ben, when I moved out here, I was like, I think I just made a friend. I didn't even think about having friends. I was so, we came here for the purpose to get a job and this is going to be it. And then I started meeting people, and they were like the craziest people. Um, and I have friends from Israel. I have friends from Brazil. I mean, L.A. is a really cool place to meet people because they're from all over the world. Everyone had a dream to be out here. That's awesome. And that's kind of like, make a lot of friends with the less party thing? Uh, well, uh, uh, it was always party. I, uh, where that came from is... <laughs> Is actually, a, have you ever seen the movie Wayne's World? Yeah, actually. Yeah. So, part of the game, and I'm a rock and roller, I play music. I was going to ask so, about that, too. What I don't like is business cards. I, I just think they're cheesy. Okay. So, when I got my first job in LA, instead of passing out my business card, oh, I'm Eric, here, call me. I was like, no, no, no. What I'm going to do is have a catchphrase, create like a character. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, you know, bringing coffees or lunches to all these editors, before mm. I was an editor, I'll be like, here's your chicken salad sandwich. Party. And they remembered that. And they were like, yeah. 
what they were like, you know, working really hard, probably just tired. And when I showed up, I was like a sunshine of the party. <laughs> Awesome. So it worked. It really worked. I was like the guy. I was like, Here's your coffee party, and like, and then one day, one of the senior editors pulled me aside. He's like, Why do you say that all the time? I go, Hey man, I thought about it. Like, business cards or whatever. I figured this would be my end if I could entertain you. Yeah. So it was all a show. It was all a show yeah. to try to get some way to sell myself with people I don't know in Los Angeles, and they loved it. Makes a lot of sense, man. I mean, my mom always told me the best way to make a friend is to keep them entertained. Make them yes. laugh something. Comedy. Comedy. I'm all about comedy. I mean, you probably saw all my videos there. It's all, it all stems from like three stooges. It's just comedy, comedy, comedy. I mean, if you can make people laugh. I mean, I'm still doing movies. Now, I'm doing a movie right now that I basically shot when I was at WPAA. But it's just really? Comedy. Just doing dumb stuff. It's the, fun, the most fun. That's awesome. We're gonna we're gonna roll in some Planet Access. I saw no, a clip boy. just before. No, I got a, I got a problem with that Planet Access. Wanna hear my problem? What's that? My problem with Planet Access is they would show up every Friday night, you know, as a guy, I wanna go out on Friday night. Oh. Uh, they would do their good? shows on Friday night and I'd be like, Yo, it's it's ten o'clock, it's Friday night. Yeah, it's, it's time to get out. No, that was the greatest show. That was like my favorite. We had so much fun making that show. It was always on Friday night. But Is that how the one. dating game happened? I was, yeah, there we go. Play that. Steven Cream, now live from Studio One. What's going on, everybody out there? I'm Steven Cream, and I'm staring at you. Welcome to Planet Access, the dating game. We will have one contestant three bachelors, and then the grand prize, sucking face. Let's meet our first bachelor. First bachelor is Dr. Henry Frankenstein. He's a med school dropout, single since his fiance died in a tragic accident, and he's looking for a woman with a nice skull. Contestant, or bachelor number two, I should say, Igor, Dr. Frankenstein's wingman. That's Igor. Excuse me. Igor is looking for a woman who doesn't move quickly, likes long walks on the beach by moonlight. And contestant number three, a guy in a mascot costume who wandered in off the street. I don't get it. Well, let's meet our contestant, Marion. Come on on the set. Come on. Come on. Meet the nice people at home. Come here. Come here. You got to get in the camera. Oh, wrong shot. <laughs> you know what was great about that? Um, no, no one ever proofread our firearms or text. Uh -huh. So when that showed up, it said, it said starring, or no, staring, Stephen Cream. I'm like, Catherine, who was the producer, I was like, you spelled it wrong. So... And that's why I go, I'm Stephen Cream and I'm staring at you because she wrote <laughs> Stephen Cream, so I quickly improv because she misspelled the word starring. Dude, that is awesome. But I remember when we shot that and I was like, you know what I loved about school, uh, especially in Hamden, we had uh, theater and drama. Uh -huh. I was I I was I never did good at math, I never did good at science, but like video, we had a we had video, that's where I really took off. Yeah. And in, like, theater, like, having a block, uh, what they call it, a black box, and impro improvising. That was always my favorite thing to do, is just go crazy, be nuts. Yeah. So that old Stephen Cream, the dating show, I remember it was a Friday night, I think it was Valentine's Day, and I just said, I, I said, screw it, I'll be the host, and I improvised yeah. that whole thing, and it feels good when you do that. It just, yeah. let yourself go. It's, like, spiritual in a way. Just be a maniac. Trust me. And that's, I think that's one of the coolest things about um, my experience working here is how much I've been able to improvise and yeah, kind of just you. It's like you against you, you know. And then and you're lucky to have a place like that because Hamden did not have a place like that. New Haven, forget about it. To get through the door, you know, when I came to PAA, uh -huh. to her, everyone was really like, yeah, you want to do something. I was like, oh, wait, what? Like, you're so inviting versus everyone else. It's like, 
and when it gets it gets weird with TV and video sometimes. Like, I don't know if people have egos or big heads, but like PAA was a place where, yes, I was producing all that show, but then all the stuff that I was doing, like I'm a master at green screen right now. Uh-huh. Like I had to do it because I was doing it there. Yeah. Did you ever um? Did you ever get turned down a lot of places? Like your ideas. I will, I'm going to say this, and I'm never going to say who it was, but it was someone from Connecticut. I'm going to say this. I said Only this in another, Connecticut? There was, there was, I said this in another interview. And I will never, Ben, if you want my phone number after this or whatever, I'll give it to you. My email, whatever, if you want to be friends on social media, I'll help you as much as I can. Because uh-huh. that's what I really appreciate. But when I was your age, I don't know how old you are. How old are you? As a tree. Sorry, Rob, just put another tree in. My, my issue is there was somebody in Connecticut that was, doing like really cool horror movies and okay. really that's what i wanted to do and i remember i had sat down at a restaurant or a bar with him and i tried to pick his brain because i wanted to do what he did and he was so cold to me really and i and i was like i will never be like that person if anyone hi how are you what shirt are you wearing is that a band uh it's a bart it's a simpson shirt oh i love your simpson bart Oh my God, I love the Simpsons. I actually, I'll tell you a Simpsons story, whoever that is, in a second, because this is crazy. But yeah, someone turned me down in Connecticut, and I said, Ben, for the rest of my life, I will never be like that. If anyone ever wants my number or a contact or just want to call me, I will, because I know how that mu- how much that hurt me when that person yeah. was like, so cold to me. I'm, and they're from Connecticut. You're not even from Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. like, you're from Connecticut. Yeah. like. Uh, yeah, I really, if that, no one in L.A. has been like that. Everyone in L.A. has been pretty cool. In LA. <laughs> what do you think the creative difference is from, like, obviously that experience and then just the people you meet that are so, like, welcoming? The creative differences? The create like, <clears throat> how do I phrase it? I'll, I'll, I'll say this, I'll say this. Uh, I thought I was the best. Okay. I thought I was the best. Then... I was not the best when I showed up to Los Angeles. <laughs> I was the worst. And so my ego had to go out the window immediately. And these people that I worked with, I, I learned a lot. I really adapted to what they were doing and not making it about myself. Um, even on social media, I never used the words I or me. I haven't done that in seven years. I never used the word I or me. It's us and we, not I or me. That's awesome. I think a lot of people talk about themselves, especially everyone's an Instagram star or Facebook star. I don't, I'm, I've always been in bands. It's not one person. Mm-hmm. It's a band. Like WPA is a band of people coming together to make something. Yeah. Always. National Geographic, Life Below Zero is a band of people coming together. I really, I mean, I, if I wanted to be an Instagram star, TikTok, I, would, I know I would kill it, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to live that life. No. It's, it's better too, to be around it's people. Too about, it's too much about people, uh, like self-absorbent, and I don't like that. Oh. It's always about friends, family, a band, a group, a production team, not I or me. That's awesome. And no. I mean, that's how I survived out here, because I was not. I was a team player, not a me, 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 me. <laughs> now, to go back... Um, Talk about your early days. We talked a little bit about WPA. Can you talk to me about your time at Southern and like what projects you were working on there. What you were you know, doing. No, the thing about Southern is I didn't want to go to school. I was in a very I mean you can Google it. I was in a very, very popular band. Okay. So when I graduated high school and right. yeah, there's some of it. Actually that none of those photos of the band I was popular in, but yeah, there's some <laughs> um I was in this band called Grover Dill, and there was a, we used to play, like, the Hartford, we used to play with Link-182 and Green Day. Okay. I, play, I just wanted to be a musician, so yeah. when I graduated high school, I quit college. I was only there for, like, a semester. Okay. I really wanted to go to UConn. I didn't want to go to Southern. I wanted to go to UConn, but mm-hmm. that didn't happen. I didn't have the grades. And then the years that I was in the band, I, I dropped out of college. The years that I was in the band, I always had a video camera. And remember, there was no iPhones or YouTube. Yep. So I was always filming stuff. Always filming. 
That's why I have 600 videos in front of me. So always filming stuff, and on the road, I was basically making home movies like Jackass. Like, okay. my band. My band was like a real life jackass. Like they were crazy. Like being on the road, traveling from California back. My first time in LA, we opened up for No Doubt at the Rose Bowl. I mean, crazy stuff. But just like any band or any job, sometimes it falls it falls apart. So yeah. when I went, when we got back to Connecticut after seven or eight years being on the road, this is before WPAA. Um, mm-hmm. I decided I wanted to go back to school. And I wanted to get my education. I went back. And you know what? Being older going back to class, I was getting A's because I wanted to be there. Versus yeah. when I didn't want to be there, I was a poor student. When I wanted to be there, I got all the A's. And I was doing great. And I was working at WPA too. Like, so I was, I was there on Center Street, and I was working, and I was going to school. And eventually I graduated, and about two years after I graduated, they asked me to come teach. Okay. And then I became a, I was an adjunct uh, professor at uh, Southern for two years. Okay. What were you, were you just focused on being a professor? Were you taking, like, other jobs? No, like- no. It was a phone call, and I was like, oh, there's a paycheck. Oh, yeah, and I love, like, what we're doing right now. I love to teach. Like, whatever I can teach to anyone, solo in a classroom, I love it. And I thought if I stayed in Connecticut, that's what I was going to pursue. I, I would be a teacher because I just love talking in front of people and also, you know, telling people it's okay if you work hard, you'll get what you want. Like, Ben, if you want to do video, you can come to L.A. I mean, I did it, and I had no money coming back here, and it happened. Like, anyone could do it. If I could do it, anyone could do it. But you have to have, you have, to have the chops. You have to have work long hours. I mean, yeah. there's so many where, like, you know, my shift probably ended at 9, 9 p.m. at WPA, but I probably stayed till 11 o'clock and stuff. Mm. Because it didn't annoy me. I wanted to succeed and make stuff. Yeah. That's um, right. But, yeah, I was a professor for two years, and then I got my first job uh, in Massachusetts, which was also for National Geographic. So my roommate at the time had sold a show to Matt Geo, and then he took me with, he took me with him. And that's in Massachusetts, I started meeting uh, producers from Los Angeles. So when I moved to L.A., I can tell you the story how I moved to L.A. Okay. Actually, it's a Cinderella story. So I moved to Los Angeles, right? I, I had like 2000 bucks. That's about it. Not, that's not a lot of money. I, that's like yeah. one month's rent. And, you know, there was a couple of producers I met in Massachusetts, and I thought about calling them. I was like, why would they want to hear from me? Yeah. And then literally one day, like, my, I had, like, $200 left in my pocket. And I was like, I didn't have a job yet. And I was literally at a stoplight, like, on Melrose. And I looked to my right, and there was one of the producers from Massachusetts, like, walking the street. And I rolled down my window. Not press the button, rolled my window down. Yeah. My car stopped. That was cool. I don't even have a car now. And I said, his name is Joe. I said, Joseph. Hey, it's Eric. And he's like, oh, Eric, I saw on Facebook you moved here. Mm. Are you looking for a job? I was like, yes. And my life's going to turn green any second. And I've been on that show for 11 years with that guy I saw on the street corner. Crazy if you never rolled the window down. Exactly, or said anything. But, yeah, yeah we've, been, we've been together for 11 years on Life Below Zero. It's definitely like... On the stoplight, so, stoplight on Melrose. That's so awesome, man. And like you, are you close with him? Yeah, I mean, I went to his wedding. There we go. Uh, I've been there for like, I, you know, his baby's now. And I you know, one of those. That's, that's some friends. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely my employer and you, you respect the boss, but also we have, you know, we can talk about anything. Yeah, yeah. he's a good guy. That's he's a really cool. good guy. Do you remember cool. Citizen Mike, the intro you made? I, yeah, play that. I don't remember the. I remember the show. Mike was really cool. This is something he made in 2010. Yeah. News. Commentary. How many have you run it? Interviews. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. 
Citizen Mike Show starts now. I remember that. I remember uh, Mike took me to Archie Moore's and I got a beer after that. <laughs> that was the your wings. payment for Sorry, that? I got to have that the wings. So, yeah, I had a beer and wings at Archie Moore's. That's awesome. All right, yeah, we're going, Mike, we're going back to what... Is oh. Mike still doing that show? Yes, he is. Wow. Tell him I said hello. Yeah, Mike was great. I, I, I like... The, the great thing about Mike is he was so professional, and I like that. Though, so, yeah, you know, I'm not a political person. It's politics are almost yeah. You know, but he was so good at like this format and the shows that mm. I was on my A game for his stuff. He was actually here today with the uh, Secretary of State. Yeah, that's great that he's still rocking and rolling. He is. Um, going back to what we were talking about before, the producer Melrose. Yeah. Is that, I mean, that is a Cinderella story. Do you have any more, like, relationships like that that are kind of just from moving to L.A. that you made that are just almost like a fairy tale? Yes, I do. Tell me a little uh, bit about that. There might be a band you heard of, heard of called Aerosmith. Aero, are you serious? I have an Aerosmith story. All right, I want to hear that. I was working with a band... I was working with a band, because I'm in a band, I was working with, I'm, I'm doing music videos on the side, um, and I was working with a band, and it's with this one, um, it's all female, like, glam band, they're like in their 20s, and one of the girls is Johnny Depp's goddaughter. Okay. And I had close, I was very close with the band, I was doing videos, doing videos, and one day, she was like, my dad wants to meet you, because he heard you do videos, and her dad was a music producer. Mm -hmm. And he's recording Joe Perry from Aerosmith's Christmas album. Okay. And I actually got to direct, and it wasn't a crew. It was like me and two of my friends. I got to direct Joe Perry singing Run Run Rudolph. That's so awesome. And I got to hang out with him at Johnny Depp's guest house. Okay. And I actually, on the phone, have a voicemail from Joe saying how great the video came out. But that's like... That was the crazy thing, because my dad is a huge Aerosmith fan. Yeah. And my but father's like, like, in Connecticut, going, how the heck did you line that up? I'm like, I don't know, Dad, this is L.A. Weird things like this happen. That was like the yeah. proudest moment ever. <laughs> I had the best time hanging out with Joe. And he was so sweet to us. Like, He would just like look at our cameras and be like, oh, what kind of camera is that? And like, it was like hanging out with Grandpa. Like, He was so cool and just chill. <laughs> And, like, we just talked. Like, he was the nice. It was, I mean, when we filmed him, after, like, two takes, I'm like, we're done. Like, he's great. But I'm like, no, let's uh -huh. keep filming. It like, 15 takes. I was like, <laughs> I never want this moment to end. Keep filming Joe Perry. <laughs> that is the coolest thing ever, man. Yeah. That was really, that was really cool. And that is, so, I mean, that's, like, one of the, that's 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 got to be that's not happening anywhere else but L.A. Man, that is yeah yeah. And then I thought, oh my God, I made it. This is going to be the rest of my life. No, you have to go back to work the next day and you keep hustling. <laughs> that was just one moment in time. But that was going to pay the bills for the rest of your years. You have to keep working on yourself, being better. Like I'm better now than I. You know, you just work on it. I'm better now than I was two years ago. I was better now. I'm better now than I was three months ago. But I'm not even that. There's people I work with that was so much better than I am. I'm just like, just watching what they do. To yeah. like, I think that's part of being an artist. Like, you're always just trying to be better and better and better. Yeah, you never, not, you're never going to just, there's, there's no, like, end point of the ladder. You're going to always keep climbing to the day you're dead. You're just going to keep going yeah. and going and going. There's no, you know, there's no end game. No ceiling. There's no, and there's also no retirement plan either. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you save, kids. Make sure you save. <laughs> Because there is no, the government is not paying you to stay home and be old. No. Can we roll in some of a music video? Anya. You can tell my girlfriend to come see this. Anya. I'm going to play my music video. All right, let's see it. Turn. Turn. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. 
buddy. Come on, Billy. Oh, man. You guys do that again. I All right. Come on. Oh, no. We're trying to pull up that kid. That was like a crazy guitar move. That's right. All right, those are the outtakes. We'll play the full thing at the end of the show. You know, you know what's crazy about that band? I don't know if you've ever heard of the band Twisted Sister. I've heard of them. I've never heard them, though. We're not gonna take it. Oh, yeah. So those two guys in that video who are from Wallingford are D. Snyder from Twisted Sister, guitar player and drummer. So they play with D. Snyder. No way. All my friends are famous, man. <laughs> it all happened in Connecticut. That was East Hollywood, now we're on real Hollywood. But yeah, those guys were from Hollywood for the musicians in that band. They, they're the drummer and guitar player for uh, Dee Snyder. We're not going to take it. Are you still no. playing music, like playing shows? Yeah, here and there. Uh, my favorite place is... Uh, A Viper Room. Okay. That's a Johnny Depp's film. That that's my favorite place to play. But yeah, I still play. I think that's what also makes me a good editor too. Is like music, and everything's in time. So like uh-huh. when you're editing, so when I edit anything, um, any any project I work on, I always layer in. I find the piece of music I want to use, mm-hmm. layer that in, and then cut to sound. Yeah. That's the easiest trick everything. in the book. That's the easiest trick in the book. But as a musician, I think I have an ear for it, but I also could find, like, the, the time. Yeah. Always cut. Find the rhythm, cut the beat. There we go. Um, obviously, editing has been much evolved from when you started. Can you tell me what that's been like a little bit, from the equipment to just how you approach it? Well, it's gotten easier, I think, uh, for not having to use tape anymore. I mean, okay. I, I still save these tapes, but it's gotten easier with, like, uh, cameras that have. Yeah. Well, is there anything you miss? Final Cut 7. Okay. Was I, miss that... Final Cut, I miss Final Cut 7. I thought this computer that I'm talking to you on, uh-huh. I keep the computer old. I don't update the Mac OS to keep that software because I have so many projects that are on 7. And that's what I learned in college. That was like the industry standard. Okay. And then they got rid of it. Final Cut 10 since it's for like families that go on road trips. It's terrible. Um, I use Avid now, which is great. But uh, what I miss is just Final Cut 10, uh, 7. I think it was the greatest piece of software I ever used. And people would get mad at me. Like, why are you so bad? Like, I'm making a movie right now. There's a flashback to like 20 years ago. I'm making a movie about a character I played 20 years ago. Uh-huh. And, I, and I'm using Final Cut 7 because I want them to go back to the original way that I used to cut stuff. And is that, so compare, you said it was easier, so but, but when you go back to Final Cut 7, are you like, oh, okay, this is, this is, I'm like a knife through butter, you know? No, it's the great, it's so, it's so fly. I think I was trying to get Kurt from the suit, like, we should have Final Cut 7 at WPA. And I was like, no, we're having, what is it called over there? I forget. Uh, speed Edit. Speed Edit, which is great, too. It, speed Edit is really cool, but, like, yeah, I was all, I was always, even when I moved to L.A., I was trying to tell the producer. Final Cut 7, Final Cut 7. That, they're like, that is a Final dinosaur. Cut. Shut up, Eric. I'm <laughs> like, I'm in love. That's awesome. I love it so much. Uh, and I just, you know, I remember, too, like, uh, I was very poor, and I didn't have money for tape. Wow. You, know, and, you know, even when I worked at WPAA, they had the GL2. So you're always, like, re-recording over your tape. And that, after a while, is not good. Okay. The footage gets all chunky. And what I remember having to, like, I lost, like, 
we would film for day, like a, you know an afternoon. Oh shit! Like, oh sorry, I swore. The footage isn't there, like because we re-recorded on this tape too many times. Yeah. So I don't miss tape. I don't. I wish. I just bought a DV deck for my house uh-huh. to tra- transfer all these damn tapes that I have at my house because I just want to go back and see all the memories. Are you a uh, you a home movie guy? Like. Yes. Is that how this passion started? And then when Sue Sue sent me your video, I watched it because I like to see what other people do for no money. Like, that's my inspiration. Like, whatever you did, I was like, that's great. And I started to steal ideas from what you do because I like to see how people do it for nothing. So I love to watch all old home movies. People, I hate Hollywood. I mean, I don't hate Hollywood. I just don't like the bigger productions. I like the smaller ones. Yeah, just like kind of like indie films. It's big ones are the same idea over and over again. I'm done with the superhero movies, like Yeah. It just it's too much of the same. Give me something very cutting edge, that's what I like. Or a young person who made something on a GoFundMe. I'd rather I'd rather watch that. You're uh you're a documentary guy too. Yes, I did too out here in LA. Two out there in LA. I heard you did some here though. Mm-hmm. What were those were great. The very first one I ever did was someone from Wallingford, and they had an idea about revisiting, I think it was like the 70s and the 80s of punk rock, this guy Jerry Lombardo. And, okay. man, he showed up. I mean, he was, like, there every day. He would show up every day with all these tapes. And I was like, ah, oh, man, i got to edit this stuff. But it was a really cool experience because it reminded me of Back to the Future. All right. He went to shows back in the 70s. I wasn't even alive yet, so it was like, we literally got into the DeLorean and went back in time and with all this footage and put together this rock and roll documentary called It Happened, but nobody noticed. And then to this day, I have a poster on the wall. It Happened and Nobody Noticed? It Happened, but Nobody Noticed, because the problem with New Haven is there's New York and there's Boston. A lot of bands don't yeah. come to New Haven because they don't have to because the big markets are New York and Boston. So this film was about some of that. And yeah, it was great. I mean, you're going to play clips. You have a clip? That would be cool to see. Do we have a clip of that? I don't have a clip of this, but we're playing it. We played it Saturday and we'll play it again. Oh, oh we'll, yeah. I guess we played it Saturday. But that was really cool because that was literally what WPAA is. It was somebody from the community that had an idea and they showed up every day to work on their project. Awesome. They were so about the facility, renting the cameras, utilizing the edit suite. They were all about, that, that movie would not have been made if it wasn't for a place like, like WPA. We have some horror clips. Do you want to see some of your old horror clips? Yeah, play it. I got some of I those. Love, I love old stuff. My girlfriend hates when I play this stuff, so it Ben, you and I can watch it together right now. Yeah, let's roll it up. Roll it up. Tanya. Attention all viewers, there seems to be some sort of virus going around the town. If you have had any red meat today and experience symptoms such as vomiting or other behavioral differences, rush the infected to the hospital. I repeat, rush them to your local hospital. Rush them to the hospital. The hospitals are overloaded with the infected. If you need assistance, the authorities are telling us that you need to put a white cloth on your front door and they will come and find you. This just in, it has been upgraded by police to a quarantine condition. Do not leave your house. Do not leave your house. <laughs> that guy became a YouTube celebrity. 
Well, well, I'm Jim Mackers, and Lane is here now. Oh. I am at 8 for like, Springs I got Springs that guy that can't read it for like a day. He the region. If you can't read it. I'm Jim Mackers, and Lane is here now. I am at 8 Springs 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 I have. What's that show? Regis and Kelly or whatever? Regis and Kelly. <laughs> yeah, he was. He Word was that there are fought. others he at the hospital. The with Kelly. But I've received no. And he's starting in that studio. <laughs> right now. He's a life coach? Oh. He's a life coach? Oh. Uh, well, yeah, he was great. I I did like. You know, I love actors. I could have dead up, like, I wanted to fall in love with him. He was so good. He would have no, he was so focused. He was great. Every time he showed up, that guy is going to make it one day. And then he's on Kathy Lee or whatever. He's just, he started at WPA. How easy was it for you to come in and, oh, right. More horror. At first, there was just chaos. Nobody knew what happened or where the problem stemmed. The original 20 infected, we captured, quarantined, and killed. We thought that was all of them, but hours later, more deaths were occurring. The ones we didn't kill, we wish we had. The autopsies went terribly wrong. We were able to follow the traces of the virus to the body followed through the breakdown of food into the bloodstream and then to the brain where it rewired every connection. Then they started showing up across town. Mutilated humans. Friends, family, loved ones. I don't have long now. The only way to get rid of them, to make sure they don't come back, is to destroy the brain. That is their battery. The only thing that keeps them going. I wish now I did that before. I wish now I had one bullet left. back in the day for you to come in here and make a horror film though. Yeah, it was, it was child it was very challenging. But I had that was challenging. Horror, very challenging. Um, it was nice all that everyone at that studio was a big help. All the planet got all the planet access folks were a part of that. Okay. Nowadays kids come in here and try and make a horror film and Sue does not let them. She turns Why? them down. Why is that? Um, well, because you made it look easy, I guess. And they didn't want to work for it. But, I mean, they're not showing up with, like, scripts and plans. Yeah, I think the best way to do it is, like, come up with, I mean, that movie was comedy, like, Young Frankenstein. It wasn't real horror. It was stupid. Okay. To be stupid is the way to go. Oh, man. Oh. Hey, well, I mean... Look, you can't even call it that, man. You're the guy who won two Emmy, so. Yeah, but I think it all the time, you know, I had, I never had money doing this. I didn't have money working there. I never had yeah. money. It's, it's all the hard work you put in of just challenging yourself all the time. Like every show I had to do there, working under John Sullivan or with Edna Carver or whoever it was, it was all, I was professional because I wanted it to look good. To be there, I yeah. always had to look good. I always had to sound... Actually, it has to sound good before it looks good. So audio to me is always very important. Like, I, yeah, it was a lot of great memories over there. Just crazy production and stuff. And the material, some of it I didn't care about. I don't care about politics. I don't care about what's the football game you guys have. I don't even like sports. But I wanted to make it look good. Yeah. But I'm just more of a music and life all day. 
Do you know how many uh, awards the studio's won since your time here? This this studio here, how many awards does this studio won? WPA. WPA. How many awards? Four times in the last five years, best Four times. How many? Okay, you heard her. No, no, I didn't hear. Oh, how many times? four times in the last five years, the best studio in the nation for our oh. for our budget, right? I'm really foolish. Maybe we should make a documentary about that place because that, yeah. I believe. There's a lot I, of I mean, noise. I, I'm not shocked by it. Yeah, it's definitely growing I mean, a lot. If you're ever, yeah. hey man, if you're ever in Connecticut, you want to come by. I always go back there. Last time I was there, I was hanging out too. I always go back. I tried to visit one time. I came by. Kurt was sweeping the parking lot. I always come back. <laughs> I always try to come back and visit. I, like I thought you were coming today, and then she told me we were going to we were going to be on Zoom. I still have a job over here. I can't. And it, it, it's, it was really sad because my brother was just here. He's he's from Hamden. It was like see people from ah oh, Connecticut always think puts a smile on my face. I wish. And plus, man, I haven't had real pizza in a while, so it's like hey. I, I, <laughs> there's no pizza out here. We'll get some New Haven pizza. That would be our plan. There's nothing out here. Tacos. Tacos are good. Ah, right, yeah. I can see that. Oh, man. Uh, so how is... Uh, actually, I had another question for you. So yeah, obviously... Sure. You can, you can, uh, I'm, on, I'm on no time frame, so whatever you... I like doing stuff like this. Obviously, you're not just the man behind the computer editing all the time. I mean, for our, the main job, yes, right? Everything is the main. Being a top daddy is the main. Being an editor is the main. Everything is the main. Okay. Oh, yeah, let me phrase it. But you're not yeah. always just an editor. Like, you do also film your own stuff, film yeah. other right. people. And I wanted to I wanted to actually ask you to talk about, because so I heard it in one of your interviews, and I've heard it throughout my time here, the importance of just kind of doing things, like doing whatever, just for a leg up, kind of? Uh, you know, I look at life and you have one life to live. I found this great thing called video. So one day, when I'm gone, there'll be a, a legacy. That's what I mean. I'm just trying to export a legacy of while I'm on this planet. So this is. Make as much stuff as you can before your time expires. And I love doing it. It's not a job. It mm-hmm. doesn't feel like a job. Yeah, there's deadlines and there's a lot of pressure and you get the lighting right and sound right, but like, I just want to make as much stuff as I can so one day when I'm gone, it's like, you know, that guy here, he was crazy. Look at this video he used to, you know, he had. Yeah. I think that's a good way to like, you know, my grandma, she doesn't have any videos. She doesn't have any videos on YouTube and she passed away, so it's like, I don't know. What was the question? <laughs> kind of just the importance. I was trying to answer that. What, what was the question again? The importance of just doing basically anything you can, as much as you can. I think, that, I think it's, I think it's per, for me, everyone has a personal thing. For me, I think it's personal therapy. Okay. I think making videos are, if you draw or write a song, uh, it's, it's therapy, in a, in a positive sense. It's just a great therapy. Some people practice yoga or whatever, or go to the gym. I think video is one of those things. Okay. I can't stop. I have, I'm so addicted to it. That's awesome. Coming up, did you do like a lot of projects for free? Yes. That's the problem. You have to work for free. Like, you have to. I never, I never ask for money. I never ask for money. Someone offered, that's great, and I have a job to pay, but I never ask you money. I think if you feel so entitled to ask, then get the hell out of here because... Then you're not really in it for the passion of the art. No, no. I'm so, like, punk rock, like, dude, if someone gave me, like, a hundred bucks to film for a whole day, I'd be like, that's great, and lunch, awesome. And then I will, on the back end of that, I will sweat to edit that thing to make it. Amazing. I'm getting much. I'm getting older, so I'm getting more and more tired of that stuff. So it's hard for me to like do it for nothing. But I have done that so many times. Okay. That's no cool. pay. It was more of 
seeing people in the theater or oh. watching a live viewing together, yeah. that was that pale. Yeah. And you know that your like your jokes or whatever your scenes are gonna hit and you know it's coming up and you're just watching the audience and they laugh. That is mm-hmm. a big payoff. Because that your your gag is worth. That's awesome, man. I can definitely yeah, see the passion. It's all about the passion. I never did this for money. Uh, trust me, I was working at WPA and they weren't paying the bills. <laughs> we, do, we, we do this because we love it. It's not. And then, uh, yeah, it became a career, which is fantastic. Like, yeah. yeah true. I, I made it, I guess. But I still, have to, I still have to make it. Yeah. Always you getting know. better. Always progressing. Always, you're always sweating. Or, question kind of story I wanted to talk to you about. I was listening to one of your interviews, and you were saying how in school how you hated the teachers, how they were saying, like, you're not going to have a calculator, just walking around. And I liked it. I was uh, thinking about it. It's kind of just like you can take as much advice from people as you want, but they don't really know how it's going to go. School is a difficult thing for me because I was a teacher. I think you need, you need to be grounded. You need to have discipline, education, and support. I just think my teachers... They were mean. <laughs> That's why when I was a teacher, I was not mean. I was like, yo, what's up, everyone? How you doing? Let's learn video. Like, I told my students, the day they came in my classroom, they had an A. Now, keep that A. Mm-hmm. You have an A. Just keep it up. But I don't know. I think teachers are just really strong. They're like, oh, you're not going to have a calculator. It's like, what do I have? <laughs> Walk around with it every day, everybody in the world. Yeah, I got serious. She tells me everything. I don't need... Uh, um, yeah, I thought that was always a funny thing because I was like... I wasn't like a bad student, um, but I couldn't comprehend like math and science. I just couldn't understand what they were trying to teach. But theater and music and art and video... It clicked for you. I gravitated towards that immediately. I was always getting A's in that stuff. I don't know how many people watch this or who's watching, but I'm, I'm, I'm more than willing to talk to anyone that has admiration to come out here or wants to talk to someone about the business. Like, I love that stuff, like as we're doing right now. Yeah. There was that one guy in Connecticut who was not very nice to me, and I will never be like that person because why? You should share the experience with everyone. Let them know there's hope. Like, I gave up. I never gave up. I just felt my life was never going to improve. And it was hard <clears throat> to leave Los Angeles. I would leave Connecticut. It was really hard. I had to stay body and parents. Mm. I had to stay with all my friends. But it was, it was a gamble. How long, did you, how long did you stay out there for the first time? You just moved there and never moved back? or? Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? But, I, but I've been here many times. I was visiting here 10, 11 years before, like on tour with my band. Okay. Or coming out here with a girlfriend. I've been here, but as I said, I don't gamble. And the day, my move out day, I did gamble on the day, 12, 12, 12, I thought. Mm. The last repetitive day. That is the greatest move out day. Yeah. Well, Especially well, well. Now, I mean. You took Let's the game and won, man. That's probably like the coolest thing, you know. And then I got my jo- I got my job at the BB. I worked for the BBC was February twelfth, so two months to the day, man. I got picked up somehow. So I took a party. Um, party. I got. I, I just did a party. And I mean, hey, kid, party doesn't mean get messed up. It means life. Have fun. That's what yeah. party. It doesn't mean the opposite. Oh, crazy. Uh, but I just wanted to say, too, like, thank you, too. And, you know, I'm so friends with a lot of people that used to work there, uh, which is great. Every time I come to Wallingford, I see Edmund Carver and yeah. have a beer with him. Or we go to Los Mariachis, where I shot one of my other films. I always go there. I always try to make an effort to go to Wallingford when I'm back in hand. All right. Well, Great, that's a great title. Wallingford? Yes, it is. 
I, I think Waterford's wonderful. Especially that downtown area. It's like, or the uptown, or what do they call it? That's Center. Great. Center, and then where Archie is. It's a yeah. beautiful area. All right, well, Eric, running a little low on time here, so I'm going to say thank you for partying with us. It was a pleasure to have you on here and meet you. Yeah, and if you ever want to hit me up or anyone else that's watching, I mean, Eric Michael Schrader on Facebook, Shredder Shop on Instagram, I always answer. And I'm always, actually, I don't want to do this. Just give me your phone, or I'll give you my phone number. I'd rather just talk on the phone. I don't like going back right. and forth on that. I like that. I like, to talk. I like to get a personal voice because then I understand. Then I can yeah. get a patch and they're really serious in what they want to do. I'm the same way, man. Well, you can call me anytime, man. All right. All right, well, take care, too, Kurt, everyone. Right. Thank you, Ben. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you tree guy. Thank you, tree guy. <laughs> the tree guy. <laughs> the tree guy. <laughs> All right, brother. All right, Party. take care. All right. Proud to say that the oh, has been a part of my overall journey in finding a career in media. Uh, currently, I work in TV news on the digital side, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and I would like to share some memories that I have with WPA. Uh, my first memory was when I came and visited the station in middle school.